Welcome to the iSchool's second virtual convocation ceremony. I am Dr. Sandy Hirsch, and it is my privilege to serve as professor and director of the School of Information. Today represents the culmination of all your hard work, and I am extremely proud of each and every one of you. Today we are gathered for a convocation, which is a calling together. I am joined today by Dean Mary Scutton, graduating student speaker Kayla Marie Figard, and our invited convocation speaker Toby Greenwald. I am delighted to have them be part of this special ceremony. We will end today's convocation with a congratulatory send-off prepared by our student leaders. We are here today to celebrate your achievements, which you accomplished with the love and support of dear family, friends, and colleagues. Many of you thanked your parents, siblings, spouses, partners, and children on your graduation, graduate profile page of the Virtual Convocation website. It was heartwarming to read your posts. I hope those special to you have joined this session to celebrate with you today. And family and friends who are online, please do post a congratulatory message on your graduates page after the ceremony. You can also hear each graduate's name read out with their degree on the Virtual Convocation website. This is the school's 47th convocation since we first achieved accreditation. Our mission is to educate information professionals who are highly competent in virtual and physical environments and who contribute to the well-being of our global communities. And there's so much to celebrate as a school. We are very proud to have been awarded the 2014 Outstanding Online Program Award by the Online Learning Consortium. This national award recognizes our school's dedication to delivering exceptional online programs. In addition to our nationally ranked and accredited MLIS degree, we offer several other online programs, including a teacher librarian credential, a master's in archives and records administration, a Gateway PhD program in partnership with the Queensland University of Technology, a postmaster certificate in library and information science, and new certificate programs in big data, and also one in digital assets and services. But today, we honor those who have completed doctorates, postmaster certificates, and master's degrees. Since all our programs are delivered online, we have students from all 50 states and 17 countries and are grateful that they have entrusted their education to us. Our graduates today represent a good cross-section of the overall student body, with graduates from all over the United States and several countries including Canada, Japan, Lebanon, Brazil, Hungary, Italy, and Korea. One graduate shared on his graduate profile page that he was from Singapore and that he met classmates from various backgrounds, professions, and nationalities. He shared how amazing it was to meet a student in one of his classes who was also from Singapore. Another graduate shared that the program's online platform pro um, offered perspectives from peers around the world that led to enriching conversations and ideas. Our graduates are truly serving our global communities. Graduates also shared some of the things that they liked best about online learning and their experience in the program. Some of these uh, things that they shared were that they liked the flexibility of classes, my expanded competence with technology, and collaborating with classmates. Another graduate said that uh, they liked being able to do work at any hour that worked for me. Another said the variety, depth, and breadth of the courses offered. And another said the ability to work in the comfort of my home. And another said getting my degree without giving up my job, plus having access to faculty and students from such varied professional backgrounds and locations. I also appreciated how one graduate wrote that she enjoyed going to class with a cat on my lap. After today's ceremony, I hope you will visit our virtual convocation website and peruse their graduate and graduate profiles. We offered our students a broad range of courses, enabling them to design the curriculum to best meet their needs and interests. As an example, our courses range from the study of early manuscripts and books to the management and curation of digital assets. We offer many outstanding opportunities for students to get involved in the school, such as serving on the editorial board of our school's student research journal, helping other students as 
peer mentors and participating in award-winning student chapters of professional associations. Our school offers many ways to engage with other information professionals and to keep current, such as our highly successful virtual Library 2.0 conferences. As new alumni, it is my hope that you will participate in the upcoming Library 2.016 mini-conferences on June 15th, focused on the library's class, classroom, and on October 6th, focused on libraries of the future. These are great ways to build your professional connections, share your knowledge with others, and continue your lifelong learning. Our Open Classes program enables professionals to take just a single class or two in our program without being matriculated students. These are all excellent ways that you can contribute your professional um, development and connection with, continue your professional development and connection with the school after you graduate. We also offer free online webinars featuring experts in the field on a variety of relevant topics, including career guidance. We are for, very fortunate to have exceptional award-winning faculty and students who are influencing the future of the information profession. Just to mention a couple of highlights, this, just this year, seven of our alumni and students were selected as American Library Association Emerging Leaders, and six of our alumni and students were selected as library journals, movers, and shakers. I would like to acknowledge our faculty who are joining us today uh, and our staff who work very hard to ensure that everything runs smoothly in the school. We all work together to support you in your education and as you enter the professional world. As San Jose State University graduates, you bear responsibility today and tomorrow for demonstrating the impact that librarians and information professionals have on the well-being of their communities, whether in college and university environments, governmental environments, school environments, public library environments, or corporate environments. Congratulations to all of you. You've done it. You should be proud of your accomplishments. We certainly are. We are supported in our work by the larger university, and the iSchool is part of the College of Applied Sciences and Arts. I'm very pleased to introduce you to our dean, Mary Scutton. Dear graduates, it's a real honor to be here today. As Dean of the College of Applied Sciences and Arts, I am proud of the School of Information and especially proud of every one of you. Today, you should also be very proud of yourselves. You chose an innovative program that serves as a model for the university and for educational institutions around the world. Your school has won awards from the Online Learning Consortium, coached international universities on the development of online programs, and attracted students from 47 U.S. states and 18 countries. You're in very good company. You chose challenging coursework that has prepared you for a wide variety of information professions. Some of you will work in schools or universities, others will join public libraries, and others will fill roles in corporations, nonprofits, or government agencies. You chose a dynamic profession, one that will continue to change as new technology and emerges and society evolves. You have been well prepared to thrive in positions that will be in place in the future. Keep learning and adapting, both on the job and through postgraduate programs, and continue to foster the learning of others as you move forward in your careers. You can support the future of the profession by hosting interns, mentoring tomorrow's students, and sharing your experiences with your colleagues. Your education won't end with a degree, and the value of your learning will continue to grow as you pay it forward. You chose a vital 21st century profession, and it is my honor to recognize your dedication to such critical work. We are so proud of you. Please don't forget about us. Be proud of your alma mater. Tell everyone that you are a San Jose State alum. San Jose State will always be a part of your past, and you are a vital part of our future. I encourage you to keep connected to the college and the school. Visit campus, both physically and virtually, and keep in touch with your professors. Let us know how you're doing. Be a proud San Jose State alum. Today, I congratulate you. I thank you for all your great work. It's been an honor to serve as your dean. Congratulations. 
Thank you very much, Dean Scutton. I we really appreciate your comments and your great send off. So each year, we um, the faculty invites a student that uh, who best exhibits the academic leadership and professional characteristics reflective of our students and program to address the convocation. And this year, and this student receives the Ken Haycock Award for Exceptional Professional Practice and is asked to serve as the graduate speaker. This year's speaker is Kayla Marie Figard. Kayla, in a recent interview, said that she always knew that she wanted to be a librarian. She started volunteering in her local public library when she was still in high school and then continued working as a library aide and library assistant in public libraries through both her undergraduate and MLIS programs. She currently is working as a community program specialist at the Belmont Library in California. Early on, Kayla demonstrated a passion and talent for team services, initiating a number of creative and innovative programs that engage teens from the community in the library. One of these programs was a teen film festival, which showcased films made by teens at a new Pacifica teen film festival. She also developed a pitch it pro project for library staff members to submit ideas. The idea of receiving the most votes wins a grant to fund their project. She pitched the idea to take the teen film festival countywide, and this is now in the eighth year. At the Belmont Library, as community program specialist, Kayla is actively engaged with the local teen community. She runs a teen advisory group, and she also co-leads the Volunteers Outreach Involvement Community Events and Services Group, which is a partnership between the library and parks department that works with teens on, on a community service project. This year, Kayla was honored as a 2016 American Library Association Emerging Leader through the ALA division called Young Adult Library Services Association. The Emerging Leader Award is a leadership development recognition for new library professionals, and Kayla, with her deep involvement with teens, is a perfect person for them to select. Now that she has graduated, Kayla plans to work as a public librarian, continuing to focus on teen services, and she is also interested in desi designing a series of programs for adults with developmental disabilities. As Kayla said in her emerging leader application, leadership is enabling and inspiring others to come up with great ideas and do great work. It's not about me, it's about us as a whole. I think these are great words for all of us to think about as you all graduate today and prepare to launch the next phase of your career. It is my pleasure to present Kayla Marie Figard. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And thank you to all of the iSchool faculty and my peers for making my experience in this program so worthwhile and memorable. Before I begin, I just want to say a quick thank you to my family, my boyfriend, my friends, my colleagues, my mentor, Ed Remitz, and my dog, Chloe Oates, for not only putting up with my craziness for the last two years, but also supporting me without question. I could not have done this without you all. Now on with the speech. So, class of 2016, congratulations, everyone. We finally did it. We made it through years and years and mountains of work. We did this while sacrificing our social lives. We did this while working full time, raising families, going through surgeries and illness, and coping with loss. And we did it well. I'm blown away by all of our accomplishments. Some of you have received awards and scholarships. Others have served in professional organizations. And still others have gotten hired as full time librarians already. You all truly amaze me. Our success can be attributed to our passion and dedication for what we want to do but also to our education here at San Jose State. As I was writing my ePortfolio, I realized that the iSchool has done more than just teach us academic curriculum. The all online format, emphasis on group work, and projects using diverse media platforms prepared us in a way that I never thought possible. We were forced to learn in a way that many of us were not accustomed to. We learned how to communicate virtually in groups to produce successful projects. We learned how to use new technology tools like Jing, Collaborate, and Web Beta Pro. Most of all, we learned how to problem solve, adapt, 
adapt, and persevere through frustration and stress. These are the tools that will help us enable, enable us to put what we've learned into practice. Having the knowledge is great, but having the experience and confidence to execute that knowledge is just as important. So we have come a long way, but this is not the end of our learning. iSchool taught us a lot, but let's face it, there's always things that you cannot prepare for. We will still need to learn as we go, but this is lifelong learning in the truest sense. Libraries are centers of lifelong learning for their patrons, but they are also that for their librarians. As A.A. A. Milne State wrote, learn new things and be inspired. It's a simple statement, but it's a true one. Our job is not over. We must continue to look for opportunities to learn as we begin our jobs as information professionals. Librarians can learn a lot from each other. This is something that we're familiar with. We have created a diverse, rich sense of community among our, peer, among our peers through discussion boards, group work, and Facebook groups in our time here at iSchool. We can continue that, not just as alumni, but in our professional careers. We can foster a sense of community learning among staff at our libraries and beyond. We can get involved in professional organizations and share our knowledge. And most of all, we can learn from our communities and help make them better. We know by now that libraries have the power to transform communities. Author Neil Gaiman once said, I ran across a book recently which suggested that the peace and prosperity of a culture was solely related to how many librarians it contained. A culture that doesn't value li its librarians does not value ideas. And without ideas, well, where are we? I truly believe this statement. I mean, libraries are freaking amazing. But of course, we already know that. My library system, San Mateo County Libraries, recently adopted a new vision statement that sums up what we do perfectly. We ignite growth through transformative experiences. This statement is incredibly powerful for me, and I hope it is for you as well. OK, so I don't need to tell this crowd that libraries are wonderful. As A.A. A. Milne wrote, some of the best fun in life is free. Can you tell I'm a fan of Winnie the Pooh or what? It's true, though. Libraries provide infinite worlds to explore. But we do so much more than that. We transform communities. We transform lives. It's not enough for us to know that libraries are great. Not everyone is Neil Gaiman. We must shout it to the world. The American Library Association's Libraries Transform campaign is doing just that. You may have seen some of the because statements, but I'd like to share a few with you now. So. Why are libraries transforming? Because more than a quarter of US households don't have a computer with an internet connection. Because the world is at their fingertips, and the world can be a scary place. Because students can't afford scholarly journals on a ramen noodle budget. Because learning to read comes before reading to learn. These statements bring tears to my eyes, because I know how true they are. But many people still think we are just quiet buildings with books. How many times when, when telling someone that you were getting your master's in library science did they say, you need a master's for that? What, do you learn how to read and say, shh? OK, <laughs> maybe I'm exaggerating, but I know you've all heard something similar. This is an archaic view of libraries and librarians and what we are capable of. We must put this view to rest and share the news about what libraries have become and where they will go next. Libraries can, for example, introduce English to non-native speakers, promote digital literacy, create a safe space for teens and other underserved groups, help patrons earn a high school diploma, and foster collaboration, discovery, and exploration for all ages and abilities. So, Fellow graduates, I challenge us to become the library champions who will bring about this future. I challenge us to promote lifelong learning, to treat every interaction as a relationship, to build communities, and to ignite growth through transformative experiences. I wish all of you the very best in your future careers. I know you will all do wonderful things. But most of all, I encourage you to celebrate that you have a life again. Congratulations, and thank you.
Thank you very much, Kayla, uh, for your wonderful talk. And congratulations on that award as well. It is my honor to introduce our school's 2016 convocation speaker, Toby Greenwald, who is the Director of Digital Strategy and Technology Integration at Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. Toby received his bachelor's degree in anthropology sociology from Knox College and his MLIS degree from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Since receiving his MLIS, he has worked in public libraries in Illinois and more recently in Pittsburgh, primarily developing creative ways to integrate technology to enhance library services and making sure that the community knows how to use the new technology. He excels at community outreach and engagement. In 2009, he was selected by Library Journal as a mover and shaker, as a trend spotter, for his innovative work at Skokie Public Library as virtual services coordinator. He has run a blog called The Analog Divide, which is focused on examining the intersection of online technology with traditional library services and the community. This is a key theme for Toby, and one that I think is important for us to be thinking about as information professionals. My first direct contact with Toby was when I invited him to deliver one of our keynotes at the Library 2.015 Worldwide Virtual Conference in October 2015. I was extremely impressed with this talk entitled, Flywheel Libraries, Making Library Service Visible in the Information Ecosystem. And his talk focused on how public libraries can connect with patrons and the community at large to build lasting relationships. I am thrilled to be serving with Toby on the newly formed advisory committee for the American Library Association Center for the Future of Libraries as well. Toby is an innovator and someone who is making a difference on a daily basis by connecting people, technology, and information in communities. I'm very excited that Toby is here today to share his thoughts with our graduates who are just launching their new careers in library and information science field. It is my great honor to introduce Toby Greenwald. Hello, graduates. Uh, first off, I'd like to offer my thanks to you, Dr. Hirsch, for your incredibly kind words. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and for the chance to connect with, with all of you, the world's newest crop of information professionals. Before we get started, um, I'd really like to urge all of you to take a moment and reflect on all the hard work that's brought you here. Just think of all the wonderful iSchool faculty and staff that have guided you on this journey and all the family, friends, mentors, and colleagues that have supported you along the way. Think about that as we all sit here in our, in our various locations, celebrating our achievements all across the world. Um, you know, frankly, it takes much more than a village to get here. It takes an entire network. Um, maybe it's just the fact that I have technology on the brain, but I can't help but think about, the, think about how the Internet's constructed when I think about the way libraries function. Uh, through a series of widely distributed services, we connect with our audiences in many different ways. It's entirely possible for two different users to use the library in completely different ways. All the same, uh, those two patrons are connected, um, possibly through us, possibly through the impacts of the work that we do, and possibly through the way that they engage with other people and the various degrees of, separ of separation eventually intersect. As our world becomes increasingly connected, public, data-driven, and frankly chaotic, it becomes all the more important for us as librarians to understand the ripples that just the right piece of information can make when it's placed in the right context. Librarians really do seem to be enjoying a moment in the zeitgeist right now, thanks to campaigns like the like Libraries Can't Transform. Um, more people are paying attention to our work, and they're really starting to pick up and recognize on the way our role is changing. Uh, we see this in positive ways. Um, I think of the way the University of Pittsburgh, whose, I can, whose library I can see from right out of my, uh, the front door of my office. Um, their archivist just recently uncovered a songbook that helped provide the evidence that's helping to place happy birthday to you in the public domain. Send them your thanks the next time that you visit a theme restaurant and you're spared from having to listen to whatever made up uh, original creation they used to, to feed your uh, table mate. Uh, but just as there are these good things, there's 
there's also seems like uh, every one of those stories has met with some of the folks who haven't quite gotten the message. Uh, just like uh, Kayla mentioned, I've ex I still experience these. Um, I was at a, a gathering recently, and as I was trading small talk with the various new uh, acquaintances there, I do what I usually do, and I explain just what on earth a director of digital strategy does, and why this is important to both the library and the community around it. And then, of course, one of the people I was talking to chimed in with that all too inevitable response. So tell me, do you think libraries are being made obsolete by the internet? Fair warning, graduates. You're going to get this a lot. I find it's best not to take it too seriously. Maybe just make a joke about having an updated resume, just in case. Almost as inevitable as this, uh, this uh, comment is the follow-up. Uh, is the follow-up. There'll be the pause, and then they'll say, well, you know, I still love books on paper. Trust me, you'll get that one just about as much as you get the other one. And you know what? I love print books, too. It's just, it's one of the things that drew me to this profession in the first place. I love the codex as this perfectly executed means of concentrated knowledge transfer. Uh, when I love a book, I pour over every detail to get a sense of the story behind how that book came together. And yeah, I'm, I'm that guy who stays behind at a movie to watch the credits all the way through to the end. Uh, there's a network of ideas behind every published book, and I'm always curious to see the folks who sit beneath the surface of whatever information is, is carried through. Um, one of my favorite pieces uh, came from Jane Jacobs in her book, the, her classic work, the, the Death and Life of Great American Cities. Uh, in it, she talks about illustrations and says that the illustrations in her book actually sit all around you. Um, she urges the reader to look at the cities all ar around them and to listen, linger, and think about what you see. This phrase has stuck with me for a really long time, and it affects the way I choose to engage with my community, uh, both in my work and in my life. Uh, other examples include the story collection Magic for Beginners, uh, where I learned that uh, author Kelly Link test drove her stories by opening for the Magnetic Fields, one of my favorite bands. Um, and uh, in her novel, uh, another example is uh, from the novel An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. Um, where the acknowledgments at the end, she takes time to, uh, to thank Channing Tatum for his neck. Uh, and then every once in a while, you get a comment like the one Juno Diaz leaves uh, uh, in his novel, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. Um, in that, he takes time to thank every librarian who ever gave him a book. Uh, I relish comments like these, and not just out of some kind of bizarre narcissism by proxy. Um, our work is often very personal. Uh, it's, it's based on developing really intense relationships with the people who come in and possibly maybe only have very brief transactions with us. Uh, but those transactions build up over time and forms uh, what they call a kind of ambient intimacy. Um, in being so tied to this moment of human interaction, um, because it's so f focused on the one-on-one, -on -one, it's rarely seen by a larger audience. Um, our role as a node on our, our users' network may not always be visible, but it's always there. I tend to think about these acknowledgments a lot in my job. Uh, my charge as Director of Digital Strategy and Technology Integration at Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh uh, is, is to re-envision the library's role in a changing world of information. As the hyperlinked, share-friendly tools of digital culture help to reveal hidden connections in the network, it's on us as librarians to do all we can to make this impact known to our communities. We know that these interactions and impacts have always been there, but it's, uh, uh, but it's more important than it, it ever has been to bring them out into the open. In spite of the technological changes taking place all around us, it's more often these human factors that really lock these connections into place. You likely have had a similar experience, and Kayla just spoke about this herself. Um, though you're separated by your physical locations, the, the online learning platform and the online learning experience brings you together to learn and connect in entirely new ways. It's thinking about how these tools all mesh together um, with, the, with the human factor that's really been the foundation of my work and why I kind of have taken that phrase, the analog divide, to heart. Um, this is also what brought me to Pittsburgh a little over two years ago. As I have to make a confession here, taking this job at, at CLP was something of a blind date. Um, after I got the offer, um, I had basically spent about three days total in the city before I decided to pull up stakes and move there from, from Chicago, where 
I had settled down and had, had a pretty comfortable life. Um, I didn't know a single person in Pittsburgh, and I had no idea of how to get around town. Um, for those of you who don't know, Pittsburgh is covered in hills, and Google Maps and the like have no idea how to handle a z-axis, um, let me tell you. Um, but I know I knew I'd found the right place because the more and more people I talked to, the more I realized that this was a town that loved its library and really understood the impact that what that a library provides. Um, for a little history context, um, in 2009, in the aftermath of the housing crisis, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh was about to close branches. Sales tax revenue had dried up. Andrew Carnegie's original charter with the city of Pittsburgh only required the city to pay the library $40,000 a year. There was never any sort of adjustment for inflation. Um, in order to survive, CLP needed to pass a millage, and it needed to do so in a city that had been dealing with a decades-long economic slump. So people were already pretty wary of anything that may have increased their, to their taxes. And yet, that referendum passed in 2011 with over 72% of the vote. Think about that. Getting nearly three out of four people who had been dealing with a recession, both immediate and long running, um, to pay for a property tax is really no small feat. And it happened because the library went out of its way to be as strong a node on its own network as it could be. Every person, every community organization, every agency, all of them had a story about how the library and its people had made a difference for them. And that's what got me to, to kind of blow things up at, in my previous life, in my previous job, and start a whole new adventure in Pittsburgh. And this is the place where you really can't underestimate your role and your, and your organization's role on this, this diverse, disseminated network. All of these acknowledgments and anecdotes are nice, and they really help to reinforce the impact of the myriad services we in the library world perform every day. But there's also the matter of what happens on our side of the node. What do we do beyond just helping people? Um, and this is where you need, this is, this is your real opportunity here. Every one of these connections is an opportunity, a window on the various communities that we serve. The more and more of these connections we have, the better an understanding we have about how people engage with the information, how they learn, interact, and uh, where, and, and connect with one another. Um, each of these gives us a chance to find those hidden connections between the people that we help out and the people who can influence major decisions that affect our, our organizations. Um, this, in turn, is a, is a fulcrum from which we can lean on to create positive change. Your work, all of you, um, whether you end up in a public library, a university, a corporate space, or some other, any other type of field that, that hinges on the exchange and organization of information. It's going to hinge on your ability to find that fulcrum. When I moved to Pittsburgh, like I said, I didn't know a single person. I made a point to meet up with, every, with as many people as I could, including the, uh, the couple who owned the Airbnb I stayed at when I had to find a place to live. Sometimes we'd go out for lunch. Sometimes we'd go grab coffee. Sometimes we'd go grab something a little stronger. Um, in doing so, I discovered more than I ever would have uh, about the tensions and changes happening in Pittsburgh. This so wasn't really easy for me. Um, I'm, as, as befits the stereotype, I'm a pretty strong introvert. And so getting out there was, was definitely a step outside of my comfort zone. Uh, but this is a town in which uh, the past and the future are colliding in new ways. And you may, you may be experiencing the same thing in your own town. So the rapid growth of the technology field uh, is trying to bring about a new working model, but at the same time they're grappling with all of the environmental issues that are left over from the, the steel industry. Um, the, very, the, the same technology workers who are now coming to Pittsburgh and bringing in new jobs and new opportunities and new demographic shifts are changing many of the old spaces. This is a city that takes its history very seriously, and the rapid shifting in demographics and the gentrification of neighborhoods are, um, are, is leading to a certain amount of tension. Um, knowing about this and knowing all about all the connections that sit under the surface and make things happen, these create the niche in which the library, in which your work can help, can help move the network to create positive change. Um, you know, at, at some of the work that we've done here, uh, how do we create dialogue on environmental issues? At CLP, we started checking out home air quality monitors for our users and using that to spark discussions about citizen science. How do we look at the effects at how this, uh, 
this tech-based and startup entrepreneurial culture, overlooks a lot of the legacy businesses, all of the mom and pop storefronts that wouldn't ever have any connection to the venture capital scene. Well, we've worked with other business professionals to start an incubator program of our own for small businesses, particularly those in legacy minority neighborhoods. How do we recognize the importance of big data in our city, given that the city is moving toward um, more data-driven decision-making? Well, at the library, we've launched a whole new data literacy program, recognizing that this is a mechanism through which people need to learn how to see the world. Uh, and we're in, embedding that in all of our, our, our activities to help people learn about privacy, about transparency, and how people can use some of the same tools that major decision makers are, are using in order to um, influence the same people and make their own neighborhoods a better place. It's really not just in Pittsburgh where this network is moving. Libraries everywhere are building off their own networks and creating whole new types of change. This network exists in the places where librarians are pushing for more diverse representation in publishing, the We Need Diverse Books campaign. It exists in the folks of various libraries who are using their 3D printers that they may have purchased as, a, as an experiment uh, to, to create prosthetics and other tools for people who have never had the resources to design and obtain their own. It exists in the spaces that we're pushing for better deals with publishers both in the commercial world as we, as we explore the ebook commercial environment, as well as in the academic world as we, as we attempt to exert more leverage as far as open access to, to data and open access to um, faculty creations. Um, and it's also in the ways that we're pushing for more welcoming language, even coming into conflict with Congress on things like the subject heading for illegal immigrants. How do we, how do we use that language to, to shape the, the, the discussion? And to that same end, it's in the ways that we work to make everyone feel safe and welcome, that everyone who walks in through our doors or through our virtual doors, no matter their background or identity, has value, that they matter, that they belong. Uh, we're only able to create these things by connecting the people and earning the trust to make things happen. This is a privilege that our job affords us, and I ask all of you to use that privilege well. Our jobs aren't reactive, where we're supposed to sit at a desk and wait for folks to come in to ask us a question. We are the force multipliers that make things better. So as you step forth on your new careers, I urge you to aim beyond just the simple acknowledgments page. Don't just aim for recognition. Write your own story on the very communities you serve. And with that, graduates, I want to send you on your way. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Toby, for those inspiring words. And I like that idea about writing your own story. So I think those are um, something we can all be thinking about as we um, uh, start wrapping up our, our ceremony today. So I open today's ceremony by reminding us that the word convocation means a calling together. Another word for today's ceremony is commencement, which means beginning. Today represents your new beginning as a graduate of our school's programs and the beginning of what we hope will be a very fulfilling and meaningful career in the field of library and information science. To help you on your way, as a graduation gift from the iSchool, I'm very pleased to announce that we are giving each graduate this year a complimentary one-year membership extension to the San Jose State University Career Center. This membership includes access to resources such as resume workshops, interview workshops, Sparta jobs, online job search database, and more. It is our hope that this gift, coupled with the skills and knowledge that you gain during your time as an iSchool student, will position you well to launch your successful career. Please let, your, uh, let our school know when you land that job after graduation. Uh, we have our alumni career spotlights, and we love to have you enter in your information and share what you're doing in your new career. And please do continue to stay in touch with us in the future as you progress through your career. I look forward to hearing of your accomplishments and contributions in the future. And I hope you'll be coming to the school's receptions at professional association conferences, like at ALA's annual conference um, on June 25th, very in the near future in Orlando, and other events throughout the year. As we conclude this convocation, 
I would like to call your attention to the link on the screen. Your fellow iSchool students have put together a very special video highlighting the many faces and personalities of the class of 2016. The video is about seven minutes long and will load in your browser. And this will conclude the convocation. Congratulations again, and we wish you the very, very best.